Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. Hope you're doing well this fine. What day is it? Do we know what day is it anymore? Do they still have days? I think it's a Tuesday. I think it's a Tuesday. Hope you guys are all doing well. This is very impromptu of me, but I thought, why not? Huh? Why not? We did a deadline day stream yesterday. Do you know what the highlight was for me? The highlight for me was Queen's Park Rangers smashing it up. Goals in the 73rd minute and the 90th minute, getting a 2-1 victory over Watford. Come on, the lads. But there were a lot of transfers as well. So what we're going to do in this live stream is have a little chat through them. I've got them all here, hopefully, all being well. And uh, I'm intrigued to know what you think. And we'll figure out that age-old question. Who won the transfer window? Yes, it will be decided and figured out today. We could basically just talk about your club or anyone's club. Uh, and uh, just have a little look at it. So before I get into it, do me a favor, guys. How many people got watching at the moment? 243. If you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, if you're here for the very first time, go and check out all the other content. And if you like it, hit the subscribe button. Or you can just do it now. Either way would be glorious. Um, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell because I'm doing more lives these days. Uh, and hit the like button as well. Can we smash it, in fact, uh, as much as possible? Uh, let's have a look at this. Who are the big uh, big nominees when it comes to this? So I've got all of the main men uh, that have made moves uh, over the last 24 hours or obviously during the transfer window. So I'm just going to run through it, dive through it. Let me know what you think along the way. We talk about it. Um, and HR90 makes a great point just to kick us off straight away. 300 likes for 300 viewers? It's an option. Do you know what I mean? Like I've said before in this channel, don't be a knob. Just click it. Let's do this. So, transfer window. I've, I'll put teams on my short list. And that's not a list because I'm a short person. That's a, a list of nominees. And we will have a look at who we believe has won the transfer window. I feel like there's three main nominees. Maybe four. And actually, we can talk about championship, maybe like one or two if we want to. A couple off the top of my head. I think it actually reveals itself as we get into it. So let's just get into it, guys. Let's start off with Arsenal. Now, Arsenal are a nominee. Arsenal are a nominee. I did a video on my channel about a month and a half ago when Arsenal were really, really struggling. And the big thing for me at the time was that Arteta was going to lose his job, or it looked like it. And I was like, hang on a minute, this isn't totally his fault. This squad is an absolute mess. And the contract situation of that squad was an absolute mess. Go check out that video if you want to see me ranting about Arsenal. But in it, I was like, these guys are in tr are massive trouble because you've got so many players that are on contracts that don't even end this year, but they also don't really have that much resale value. But from, uh, from the summer to now, there's about 15 players now that have left Arsenal, you know, and have got off the wage bill at least to the, to the end of this year. And that is a massive success, a massive success. The big glaring problem for Arsenal was Martin, was, uh, was that creative midfielder. Ozil wasn't going to play, that was a given. So they've been able to get him off the wage bill. But also, bringing in Martin Odegaard, I think is a really exciting prospect for them. There are pitfalls to this as well. And I'm going to just look at the kind of general squad situation here, highlight the positives, and then I'll kind of maybe dive into the negatives when I get into the shortlist. But Arsenal will be here at the end of the video. They are a nominee for for the um, for winning the transfer window. Um, because Martin Odegaard coming in is just absolutely huge for them because I think what it does is uh, you've got to kind of look forward a few steps a lot of the time. And Emil Smith-Rowe, I think overall... I think this will be good for him because I think he's quite a selfless player. And I think actually you need a guy who's maybe a bit more selfish in that creative midfield role. And I think that's what Martin Odegaard is going to do. And I think it will help their Europa League aspirations, which could help their Champions League aspirations. That's their main chance at getting into the Champions League. So, so for him to come in and just to kind of help uh, relieve that a little bit, you haven't got to kind of try and make Sabias this creative midfielder that he's probably not. He's a bit deeper, isn't he, as a player? And then you're crowbarring him in the team. Otherwise, you've just got a load of defensive midfielders. And if you saw my um, full-time analysis of the Arsenal-Manchester United game and look at the, the uh, average positions that we spoke about, um, it was that massive gap in the middle of the pitch, you know, in the attacking midfield role. So Odegaard's going to come in and he's going to sort that out. Uh, Omar Rekic, um 
look, he's a youngster. And they're not, you know, who knows if he's going to be good enough or not. Initially, he's going to be in the under 23s. He's moved about quite a bit already. Could be all right. Left sided centre back, which is always, always helpful. Um, another centre back, I guess, as well. But I think Martin Odegaard is the big one coming in. Matty Ryan is a funny one because he's actually just been a really good Premier League goalkeeper, but has had a stinker of a season for, for Brighton, so much so that he's lost his place. But for him to go there, again, it's not too good a move. But I guess the thing you would say with both of those is they're not their players. Um, Mesut Ozil, get, this is the big thing for them, is, is getting, you know, you've got to take this in steps. And in terms of kind of getting through the mess that they'd created... They've gone a long way in developing some of the players like Saliba, who hasn't worked as of yet. Of course, he's had some problems along the way, but that's a nice loan for him. Because it says, I'll just say, it's a nice loan. Splash that like button. Uh, Kolasinac getting him off the wage bill. Oh, I generally like Kolasinac, but it's, you know, it's one of those, isn't it? Mustafi to get him off the wage bill. Ozil to get him off the wage bill. I think it's about 800k they've got off the wage bill, which is, is the best you can do. It's the best you can do right now. So I think they should be happy with their window. Uh, did they win it, though? We will find out. Aston Villa, Morgan Sanson comes in. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I think that's just adding a little bit more depth. But for me, I love what Aston Villa have done in terms of the balance of their squad. It's about depth now for them. But for them to spend a little bit of cash on a, on a box-to-box -box midfielder that could relieve some of the pressure maybe on McGinn or if Barkley's injured or if you want to go a little bit more defensive against certain teams, I think it's a great move for them. Um, no big uh, moves on the way out. Although I would say Conor Hurahan could be a, a difference maker for Swansea in the championship in a big way. He already has made a big difference for them. So great bit of business for Swansea there. Uh, Brighton. Now, Moise Caicedo. This is one of those, isn't it? We've seen this a million times, haven't we? Like, oh no, apparently it's good. Apparently it's really, really good. Um, <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> but look, all these big teams were linked with him. You know, AC Milan, Man United, West Ham, Everton, all these big clubs. So he might be great. And if that is the case, 4.5 million, I think you've got to be really excited about that. And it is something that Brighton, Brighton are so forward thinking that even forward thinking in their recruitment in terms of bringing in these sort of South American players, these players from sort of random countries in terms of the big leagues of, of world football and finding value in that. So I think it's one that they've been able to get him over the line. So they should be excited about that. A lot of people are excited about that. I haven't seen enough of him. Um, and also it's nice to see Glenn Murray reunited with Chris Hutton. Always a bit of singing in a James Alcott video. Um, interesting move for him I could uh, QPR will link with him I think we got the better one because we've got our boy Charlie Austin get in there Burnley now Burnley probably lost the transfer window for me I would say the reason they lost it is because they've got these new owners you think they're going to splash the cash come on let's go make it rain didn't happen um, didn't sign anyone really Dara Costello from Galway United good lord for, for a squad that's just got so little depth just blows my mind a little bit. Chelsea didn't bring any players in. Danny Drinkwater got himself out off to off to Turkey, mid-table Turkey team. You know, go 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 out there and get yourself some games. Good luck to your son. Uh, Lucas Persson <laughs> finally gone. And I think this is one of the moves uh, in terms of player development I really, really like. Fakayo Tomori already playing for AC Milan in big games. I think he played in the Inter Milan derby. Um, great move for him. Great move for him. You don't want him to sort of stunt his development because I think he's a really cracking player. So for him to make that move, great move for him. Crystal Palace, uh, Jean-Philippe Mateta. I don't know too much about him, uh, to be honest. We'll see if he can make a big difference. I think for them, they need to figure out what they want to do. It's probably a bit of a dis disappointing one for them, but also a tricky one with them with the amount of players that they've got out of contract because they've got so many players out of contract. They, there are decisions to be made. And I guess Max Meyer's one of those left by mutual consent. He was one that's contract was up at the end of the season. An absolute disaster for him in his career, that, that move, which is a shame because I think he's actually a decent player. Um, but there's a lot of players whose contracts are, are, are done at the end of the year. So it might be interesting to see who stays and who goes, but they're not going to make any money on those guys. Everton, Josh King. This is a cracker. This feels like a cracker to me because what you've got here is... You've and Everton are maybe, maybe. Let me know in the chat. I'll let you decide on this. Are they allowed to be a nominee for winning the window? Because what I would say is, in terms of players going out, they've got a lot of players that they've wanted to get out for quite a while. Also, developing the likes of Ellis Sims, Jared Branthwaite, um, John Joe Kenny's on his way, but Anthony Gordon as well going to Preston will be a good move for him. Um, Schenk Tosson went out on loan twice. Interesting. 
Uh, Yannick Velassi, who's, you know, had a tough time with him, getting him, him off the wage bill as well, or somewhat off the wage bill. It'll be interesting to see how much they can play there. And then Josh King for me, because I think in terms of DCL, there's a lot of pressure on this lad, you know, and I think often that I always see there's this like adrenaline and then it dies down with a lot of players. And so for, for there to be that amount of pressure on him where you can still play him, but maybe you could take him out now and again and bring in a player who is a, you know, he, he played in the Premier League a hell of a lot. I think it also could be a nice little replacement for Richarlison who can get injured at different times. He can play on that left hand side. He can play off. Uh, a central striker did it with Callum Wilson for Bournemouth, uh, so could do it for Everton. I like it. Um, I like it a lot, but I'm intrigued to, to hear what you guys think. Generally, you guys are saying no. Interesting. Um, so, okay, Everton don't make it in there. What a shame. He's good, but is he good, Josh King? That's the question for me uh, when it comes to Everton. But I think Everton overall should be quite pleased with that. Derby, let's talk about Derby for a second, who've made a lot of loan moves, which could should make them like absolutely safe now, I think, with the players they brought in. Menji they brought in, uh, Banangime. I think they've been brought in Patrick Roberts as well. Some really good moves, really, really good moves for uh, for, for Derby. Wait, that's the, that's the smart thing that Derby County do when they keep bringing in these managers, is they go, they go, I'll tell you what, use your contact book, will you? Can you just use your contact book? Yeah, well, I mean, I can call Man United and get a couple of, like, amazing starlets. Yeah, go on and do that then. Which doesn't make it easier for teams like Queen's Park Rangers, but we'll be fine because, you know what? Yeah. Smash that like button for Queen's Park Rangers winning games. Come on, the boys. Uh, Fulham. Josh Madger coming in. They wanted Josh King, so I think Josh Madger's an interesting one because he's actually... He's, He's just got that deft touch in terms of scoring goals. Scored goals, obviously, for Sunderland, then moved, made the move up to Bordeaux and has generally done pretty well. I think it's nine goals in 20 games, something like that. So I think that's as, probably as good as they could get. Um, and probably why they didn't get Josh King is because, not that he's too good for them, um, but, you know, there are other, other options to him and Everton is a better move for him. Um, overall, a steady one for Fulham. They got someone through the door. He he does have that goal-scoring prowess and, and he's of the sort, sort of similar profile to a lot of these these uh these sort of youngsters that Fulham have brought in. So I think as a collective, they're kind of becoming leaders themselves. They're kind of having to. Um, so interesting. Uh, Leeds United, really quiet one for them. Not really going to talk about them, I'm afraid. Leicester, I think Leicester got to be a little bit disappointed. Uh, Damari Gray, good move for him. Another team to talk about by Leverkusen, bringing in some uh, interesting players in this uh, window. Um, God, it escapes me now. The other uh, players that have been brought in from Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, it will come back to me, I'm sure. But Damari Gray going over there is a is a decent one. Um, kept some players that were people were looking at as well. Um, Leicester not bringing anyone in, which I feel like is a shame for a team that could have probably, uh, you know, broken broken their kind of their their transfer constraints a little bit. Maybe gone and got someone like Ericsson. I would have loved to have seen. Would he have been that useful? I think maybe just because you have got the likes of the FA Cup run, you've got the Europa League coming up. And, uh, you know, Tillemans is great, Madison's great, indeed he's great, but maybe that little bit of extra depth in midfield might have been nice for them, but they didn't do that, which I think is a bit of a shame for Leicester because, they, you know, they are title contenders. They, they are. Liverpool. Now, Liverpool uh, have to be on the shortlist, I think, because they really did turn it round uh, on, uh, on deadline day. And I will dive into that in a little bit more detail because I think they're they're right up there for me. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. I, I basically last night I was thinking uh, about a couple of nominees and I put a poll on a community post and then people started saying what about Arsenal as well. And so ah I was like ooh and I started thinking about it all and I'll dive into all of it. I've done a video on my channel about Ben Davies. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you go and check that out. Uh, signed from Preston. Good bit of business there. Steady player. Good uh, footballer. Left-footed, which will be useful, I think, with the other centre-backs that are available at the moment. Um, and and Quebec, you've got there as well. I think what's going to be interesting here is I feel like Ben Davies is the safe option. Quebec could be the... Uh, you know, that, that wonder centre-back that's probably got a lot more potential than Ben Davies. Uh, but really smart to get it sorted out. Matip out for the rest of the season as well. So important that they got two. Uh, I heard they were linked with uh, a couple of other players as well. But I think these two are pretty steady for them. And Seth van der Berg going in the opposite direction. So Preston getting a couple of nice loans to sort of um, supplement the losses that they had in the likes of Ben Pearson uh, and Ben Davies, of course, as well. And Minamino leaving as well. Minamino is... There's so much talk about on the Baltimore Street Deadline Day stream yesterday about about the sort of 4D chess of Michael Edwards. And uh, 
there is some 4D chess uh, at hand here. And I will dive into that a little bit later on. But they are a nominee. They're right up there for winning the transfer window. Man City, like I say, Patrick Roberts is going to Derby on loan. Taylor Harwood Bellis, that's a great loan for Blackburn, I believe. He's very good in championship manager. Um, always available on loan as well. Um, but not bringing anyone in, which is interesting. But I think they're on such a good run of form that they don't need to do that. Ahmed Diallo, uh, be careful with this guy. I think people are really excited about him. But I think just wait and see. Just wait and see with him. But look, probably the biggest spenders, 37.2 million for, for Man United. But with a player that isn't, is he going to start? I think, I guess he goes straight ahead of someone like Daniel James. So it, there's a, you've, you've improved it there. Um, I think what's interesting is how many of these players that go on loan you see again at Manchester United. Ted and Menji's only 18 years old. Palestri's one uh, where Alaves, like, I think he'll want to... I heard Tim Vickery talking about him and saying that he's a player that needs to be loved. So going on loan might not be the move because you might not get that love. Um, Timothy Fosu meant so that was the one who's gone to buy a Leverkusen as well, which will be great for his career. I think he's a re he seems like a really smart um, lad in terms of like looking to get out and play football. A lot of these guys are, which I, I just think is fantastic because there's bravery in that. And he's gone, he's going to do that um, in terms of going to buy a Leverkusen. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on for the next the rest of the season. Jesse Lingard, I'm delighted that he's gone out and going to get some football because I, I think he's a really you talk about Emil Smith Rowe and his his, um, his intelligent movement. There's, there's similarities in Jesse Lingard. I think the problem is Jesse Lingard is so far down the road that now people are starting to go, oh, he's crap. Emil Smith Rowe, you know, I'm sure Arsenal fans will be hoping he'll have a, a a more fruitful career overall. But Jesse Lingard's not had a bad career. He was in the England squad during the uh, the World Cup and was playing games as well. Uh, but needs to go out and play games again. So I think this is going to be good for him. An all right move for West Ham. Um, I guess he's in between a Ben Rama and a Lanzini. He's not as attacking. He's going to do a little bit more work for them. But I think I think if uh, David Moyes can get his hands on him, I think he, he could uh, turn him back into the player that he once was. I think it's a nice one. I think it's good. Uh, Newcastle, bringing in Joe Willock. Uh, I think that's good for Arsenal in terms of the fact that he will get games. Um, is he going to get true development in the way that Newcastle play? I'm not sure. Um, but he will get minutes, which will generally be good for him. What does that mean for his uh, his future at Arsenal? Uh, we'll get into that at the end of this video. Sheffield United, terrible, but they don't really have much money. They've got quite a large squad with a lot of players over on um, long contracts as well. So it's just about getting the best out of what you've got, which I don't think is the uh, the end of the end of the world. Southampton, Minamino is a is a cracky one, and they were really really pushing, weren't they? They were pushing so hard to get Maitland Niles, weren't able to get that one through. But I think in Minamino, I think Southampton fans should be excited about this. Shane Long has, has left. That's not on here for some reason. But Shane Long has gone to Bournemouth, who just have a really bloated squad. Bournemouth now. Such a bloated squad. I'm intrigued to see how they get on, like, if they can keep retain the chemistry. You guys know I've done this on a couple of videos. I feel like chemistry is really important for a team. So for Bournemouth, just lots and lots of players, lots of movement. I think that's going to be uh, a bit of a problem for them. Minamino coming in, plays with his old manager, gets minutes, hasn't really done anything wrong at Liverpool. So for him to go to Southampton and be able to kind of pick up the system of play that Haas and Hootle play straight away. Nice move for Southampton. Really nice move. More, you know, so much energy from him. Maybe a little bit more quality as well. You're going to find out. I, I think with Shane Long, he's kind of, he's ran his race. Um, is that, oh, that's Dan Long. That's what it is, isn't it? They've written Dan Long. <laughs> Shane Long. It's Shane Long, is it? I'm not getting that wrong. Sky getting that wrong. Um, Tottenham. Terrible. You know, you've got you've got problems with strikers. So you get rid of Troy Parrott and not give him an opportunity to at least be on the bench, maybe, when you might need him. Don't understand that. Maybe there's a... a, a obviously, he's had problems with injuries, but for Ipswich to get that loan deal, that could, that could send them up. That's massive for them, man. Absolutely huge. Um, Gazaniga makes his way. Not really bringing in anyone. Well, not bringing anyone at all. And I think the big one for them is it's Deli Alley, isn't it? To... The one thing I would say, right, the way I would spin this if you're a Spurs fan and you need a little bit of love today, because I know Flav was struggling yesterday, is there's a reason why Spurs are retaining him. Part of it is down to finding a replacement, but they could have found a replacement. Ericsson was there. That was there to be done. So it's not over for Deli Alli. I don't think it's over. I just think... I think Mourinho's waiting for the right reaction from him. I think you saw that from the documentary last year. You've seen that from previous managers who've had a, little, a few woes from him. So 
it's not over because if it was if he was poisonous, they they'd let it go. They'd let him go to PSG. I think they would because what it would do is it puts him in a shop window to then sell him um, later down the line. So I don't think it's the end of the world. Um, I, I guess the the important thing is is like is he a bad influence? Which I don't think he is. I think he's a little bit lackadaisical. I think you know he has that gentle waft of arrogance, but he's a good player. I don't think he's and I think he's a good egg. You know. Uh, Let's go. Over a thousand people watching, by the way. If you could, please, smash the like button. That would be glorious. How many likes are we on at the moment? Let's have a look. We are currently... How are we on? 318 likes. Can we please, please, get ourselves to... Let's double it. Can we get to 700 by the end of this stream? We've got a thousand people watching right now. If you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Massively helps. I've I've got a big dream. I've got a target for April. I'm not going to say it out loud, but I need you to hit the subscribe button. So please, please do that for me as we press on through this bad boy of a video and to find out who has truly won the transfer window. I'll look back on that in a, in a second. Let's see if it's on. It's is it? I can't help myself. Is it, is it on its way up? Is it on its way up? It's a 457. We're going. This is it. That is it, guys. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Smash that like button. Takes you two seconds. Heroes. We could be heroes just for one day. West Bromwich Avenue. Now, these guys have to be your nominee as well. They have to be. Sam. Big old Sam. Did a video on Sam as well, talking about his style of play. Is it too late for him? But you are, the steps are being put in place, aren't they? The steps are being put in place for him to sort this out. Has the January transfer window, make some moves, fix the squad, get the points. It could just happen. Some of the moves here, they have to be a nominee here for me because for West Brom, who felt so far adrift and are still quite far adrift, I, think, think that, I still think they're nine points off. They need to go on a bit of a run. Andy Lonergan, I just think he's great for the dressing room. <laughs> I think that's a general gist, and that's why teams keep wanting to sort of bring him along. I mean, he seems like he's a really good egg. Queen's Park Rangers benefiting with the likes of Sam Field um, and Charlie Austin, who's uh, coming brilliantly. He's scoring goals already, guys. It's glorious. It is glorious. And he's he's going to keep us up. We're going to be absolutely safe. We're going to win games. Up the R's. Up the R's. Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Now... I don't think Ainsley Maitland-Niles wanted this in any way. I think he wanted to go to Leicester City. The thing is, I guess for Maitland-Niles, the thing that keeps being said is he he wants to play midfield, he wants to play midfield, he wants to play midfield. Weirdly, I'm surprised that's such a... that If you want to play midfield, that means you don't get in the England squad. Done. Because the only way he's going to get in the England squad is... As a fullback, and to be honest, I may maybe he's made his peace with that already because you've got the likes of Luke Shaw doing brilliantly, Chilwell. So there's your left backs. Trippier, Southgate loves. On the right hand side, Trippier, Carl Walker, Trent, Reese James. So too many there. So maybe he's just giving up on that and goes, Look, I'm a midfielder, let me give this a bloody good go. And so I think that's a, if that is the case and his mindset's right and he's got a point to prove. I think he upgrades that midfield. Conor Gallagher's a cracking player for them as well, so the pair might work really well together as well. Uh, Yoka Slu is a real uh, sort of hard, lovely West Brom. Less, no, less West Brom, more Sam Allardyce signing. Um, intrigued to see him coming in. You know, a lot of international caps as well. So he might come in and just stiffen it up a bit uh, defensively because Sam Allardyce has been quite strong on that himself. Uh, Diagne as well has come in and already made a bit of an impact. Again, big, strong, enough to turn you on. And Snodgrass is such a West Brom player. He will be defensively sound in terms of his positioning. Doesn't really have any pace anymore, but he'll work hard and his delivery could get West Brom three or four goals alone. So I think... They are right up there for me. West Ham, the Ben Rama deal was already done. Jesse Lingard, I don't think he'll do too much, to be honest, but I just hope he gets some games and I hope maybe um, maybe David Moyes can sort him out. This is an interesting one. Winston Reid going to Brentford. Um, they've got three uh, centre-backs out at the moment. Um, so will that work? He's, he's very, very rusty. I think he might be surprised by the championship a little bit. And Wolverhampton Wanderers, I think they've got to be a little bit disappointed, you know. That's one probably uh, disappointing one for Swansea. Gibbs White going, but Conor Huran comes in, so you're probably all right. Um, yeah, I think Wolves... Look, I said, didn't I? And I, Look, the I said Wolves would struggle this year. 
um, the, the, the Jimenez thing is, is an, a bit of an anomaly for them. Uh, I think they would have hoped to bring in uh, maybe a better striker. And I think in a different climate, they would have. But I just feel like William, uh, William Jose is, is a sort of steady striker, but doesn't score too many goals. So I'm not totally sure about him. I don't think overall it's a good one for Wolves fans. I think they'll be a little bit uh, disappointed uh, with that. We've got ourselves a super chat from the man, the myth that is Andy from Let's Talk FBL. Hello, mate. Good morning. Uh, West Ham win on getting Jesse Lingard alone. Let's not put pressure on the lad. Let's not put pressure on the lad. Uh, oh, I think this is one of my biggest ever uh, lives, by the way, guys. Morning, everyone. If you are here for the first time, as I said, make sure you just consider subscribing to the channel. How many have we got? Five, four, seven likes. So we're getting there. Can we get ourselves to 700 likes or maybe even a thousand likes? Why not? Just take a second and hit that button for me. It takes you two seconds. Right. We are now into our final nominees. Is there who? Let me know in the chat who you want as your nominees. I'm putting forward West Brom. Arsenal and Liverpool. Who would you like to see in there? Uh, Con, uh, sad to see Rick Barnes deal four through. Yeah, I think that's a real shame for him. Um, in the other leagues, like I said, I think look, Blackburn continues to make really good moves. Preston got something out of it with the contract situation that they are struggling with, which I talk about in another video. And uh, Ipswich, I think that's such a good signing for them in League One to, to be able to get him. They got Luke uh, Luke Matheson as well, which is uh, which is a good one for them as well. Uh, Tom Cribber, the super chat. If any of the current bottom three stay up, who could you see dropping in there? One thing at a time, my friend. Actually, I'll answer it quickly, Tom, because it's you, bud. Uh, if any of the current top three stay up, who do you see? I think, look, Newcastle. I think it's still a problem in Newcastle. There's still a problem there. It's not sorted out. Right. I think... LFC, yeah, it seems like we've got the same nominees. So let's dive into these nominees. Burrow made some good moves as well. I think that's a fair point. Norwich had a good window instead of losing anyone as well. Right, here are my nominees. So West Brom, the thing you put forward in terms of them winning the transfer window is that these signings could keep them up. And by keeping them up, it might allow them to sell the club. It makes it it's so grave the, the situation there in terms of allowing them to stay in the division. Those signings as well are just such Sam Allardyce signings. Getting a, getting that loan, he's done this in the past, hasn't he? He likes some stuff with Daniel Sturridge. Getting someone like Maitland-Niles in, who I, I do think is a centre midfielder. I said this a couple of years ago. I think he is a centre midfielder because I think he's got such energy, which I think is, is, is underrated. I see him maybe becoming that kind of Oxlade-Chamberlain kind of player. Maybe he hasn't got the goals in him. Um, and that's why he keeps playing in a defensive uh, position. But in terms of that energy... I think that's huge for him. The Agne, uh, look, we don't truly know if he's good enough or not, but I think he's going to be, he's going to cause a lot of trouble with the size of him and his form is great. And that's a big thing in terms of uh, players that you bring into a club. If they're on a really hot streak, then they could continue that. And he's kind of done that already in this first game. If you can keep that going, that could be a real difference maker for, for, for West Brom. And, uh, and also, I just love the signing of Robert Snodgrass. I just think that's such a smart move uh, for them to bring in. Jokoslu, I don't know enough about him. Look, there's a bit of pedigree there, but is there much difference between him and Jake Livermore? Maybe it's a confidence thing. Maybe it's fresh legs. Maybe you put the two of them together. But you've now got a lot of good midfielders in the middle who can hustle and bustle. And you've got a big lad up top. And then that might free up the space for Dean Garner. Pereira to deliver a little bit more like the likes of JJ Okocha did back in the day. So West Brom are right up there. Arsenal. The problem I've got with Arsenal is on the face of it, yes, they've had a great window. But what I, what I think about when I look at Arsenal is where will they be at the end of this window? At the end of this window... They don't have Odegaard anymore, you know, unless they can do that option to buy. You don't know, do you? It might happen, but there might be another team that comes in and spends a lot more uh, money and can afford him. Who knows, right? I like the moves that are being made and I don't think it's Arsenal. There's no sort of, there's no criticism of this, really. It's just the situation they find themselves in. And to be honest, what maybe gives them a shout in this is that they, they couldn't have done too much better. But Odegaard goes back. The other two lads are kids. Ozil, okay, has gone, but you've made no money on it. Maitland-Niles comes back, but do you want him anymore? What's the final, you know, what's the final situation with him? Willock goes out. That's that's a lack of depth now that you're going to start to find in the Europa League as well as the um, 
as well as the, the, the Premier League. Willock and Maitland-Niles, you know, not have played as much as they wanted to, but have been a part of the squad and have played in those Europa League games. So that means someone else has to play those games, which I think as there's the you know competition goes on and, and the, the Europa League should remain a focus because that is a way back into the Champions League, which means money. Mustafi, free, great. Get him out. <laughs> Saliba, that's good for his development. Kolasinac might have to come back, probably won't. Socrates leaving by mutual consent. That is an absolute dream. Uh, and the rest of the guys are, you know, are players that you know aren't really good enough. So at the end of this, you've got some really big decisions to make. Really big decisions to make. Um, and in the meantime, you've got a bit more depth uh, in attacking midfield, but you've lost a bit of depth in in elsewhere in midfield. Should be okay. Should be okay. But we might be talking about this. And remember me saying this in four weeks' time when you're in the middle of the Europa League and looking to try and get, you know get far in that competition, and you know players are getting injured and falling away. That could be something that could be a real concern for, for Arsenal. And so overall, that's that's what puts them out of the running for me, is that they've done their best, Is that but they probably never could have won it, if you know what I mean. And Willock and Maitland-Niles, that almost feels like a bit of a goodbye, the fact that those two are going out on loan to those two different clubs. Uh, Liverpool. Now, this is it. This is the one for me. Liverpool are right up there. Because, again, answer the same question. Where will Liverpool be in... Where will Liverpool be at the end of this? The Kabak deal is unbelievable. Apparently they're in talks in November for £26 million. And they were like, fair enough. Seems like a fair amount. £26 million for this lad. They've then got to a point where they've got him on loan with an optional, optional buy in it of £18 million cheaper. And the loan is uh, 1 million or I think rising to 1.5 million. So you've got a guy who's probably worth 26 million. who You can buy if you want him at a cut price of 18 million. <laughs> and you get to sort of try before you buy to see if he's a good egg and see if he's malleable. Unbelievable. So at the end of this summer, you're, you're up either way. You've been able to get away with it or you've been able to bring him in on a cheaper price. Ben Davies comes in and is a really steady hand here. Really smart move here. 25 years uh, years old. Played loads of games. Cheap. <laughs> and you will sell him on for more. Fact. You are going to sell Ben Davies on for more. And if uh, Kabak is not up to it straight away, Ben Davies can come in. He's very, very good under pressure with the ball. Really smart move. And if it doesn't work out, you sell him in 18 months and you won't sell him for less than you've bought him. Genius. Genius. And then the last one, the players come out. Seth van der Berg at the end of this window comes back. He comes back and he's a better player. Liam Millar comes back and he's a better player. Adam Lewis, he'll come back and he'll be a better player. And Minamino will go. Minamino is going to go to a Premier League team that is not overly a rival, but is a really good player. <laughs> he's actually really good. Uh, he's going to go to a team that's a really good team. Uh, he's going to go into a team with a manager that has a lot of the same philosophies of Jurgen Klopp. He's going to get minutes. He's going to get Premier League experience. So this isn't minutes in the Bundesliga. This is minutes in the Premier League. And you're going to see just how good he can be. And then you get him back at the end of it. It's insane. And I guess the one thing is like, what's happening with Shakiri? Does that mean you're, kind of, you're going to invest in Shakiri? Is he going to stay there? Um, is he always going to be ahead of him? Or is it one way you go, Shakiri and Minamino are pretty similar right now. We're going to stick with Shakiri, keep him in the shop window, let Minamino go and develop, and then we'll sell Shakiri and keep Minamino. That's what I can see happening here. It's just very, very clever. Very, very clever. Uh, Cade, uh, Liam Stormont, Cade Gordon, two best 16 year old in the country, has gone to Derby. There you go. Um, Matt Hayes with a super chat as well. Liverpool now have the best Ben Davies in the Premier League. <laughs> very good. So, for me, it's between West Brom and Liverpool. And I'll be honest, if West Brom stay up, it, if, if West Brom stay up, it's, there, it's theirs. Uh, but if Liverpool, in terms of overall business, it, it's just, a, it, there's a lot of beautiful masterstrokes in there. It's really, really interesting. Um, I'm going to go with, vote now in the chat, guys. I'm going to vote for... Do you know what? To stay in the Premier League, I think, is is so huge for West Brom. It's so, so huge. And these are kind of little little nice moves for a team, but it's not life or death. 
for West Brom, this is life or death. And Sam might do it again, you know. He might do it again, playing functional football um, with, with good, solid players that he brought in on the loans, with, like I say, with Gallagher and Maitland-Niles. And it might, it might get it done for you. I actually think, look, if it works for West Brom, the safe choice, like if I'm, if I'm looking to be correct, because we don't know if West Brom are going to stay up, you say, you say Liverpool. Because theirs is all safe now. That's all fine. Amazing moves. But for West Brom, and it's, t- I tell you what, it's tough to get players to come to you in January. And it's really tough to get good players to come to you in January. And he's done, he's pretty much done that. So I'm going to give it to West Brom. I'm going to give it to West Brom because if they're able to stay up, then that is, that is Sam Allardyce master tro- strokes. You know, it's, it, that, that sort of Harry Redknapp vibe of being able to figure it out. Unbelievable. Uh, question, if he st- if West Brom stay up, who goes down? Let's have a look. I think, like I said to you before, look, Fulham need to score goals. Just imagine he needs to score goals, right? So you've got Sheffield United, West Brom, Fulham. I don't know if this will work if I show it. Oh, I can. Yep. West Brom, Fulham. I think, look, Brighton aren't totally out of it. Burnley, I think that's the problem, isn't it? There's a long way to go here. Wolves need to be careful, you know. Wolves need to be very, very careful. They're going to get dragged into something that they shouldn't do. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, that's what I'm saying. Like he had to make some changes, but not spend too much money in an epidemic, uh, in a pandemic, sorry. And, and he's done it and he's done it. And no, that's not true. Liam Storman, Jim wanting more comments on this from uh, incoming angry Liverpool fans by choosing West Brom. No, I think I've made it very clear what, what, I, why I think what I think. Uh, and that is what I think. Um, right guys, if you enjoyed that, we could do more of these in the morning. Um, the way you can let me know is two ways. Uh, consider subscribing. Over a thousand people watching right now. If you feel like subscribing and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do and hit the notification bell as well. Uh, let me know what you think. Who won the window? What were the best moves as well? Let's go. Let's go to specific moves. Let me know in the chat of uh, moves I didn't talk about. Hit the like button as well. What do we finish on? Six hundred eighty-seven likes. I just need. So what? Are we oh, six nine six. We're nearly there. We're nearly at seven hundred. Uh, let me know uh, in the uh, comments below. Thank you so much for, for spending your morning with me. I really appreciate it. Go check out the other videos on the channel. Lots more on its way. And I'll see you guys very, very